Hello everyone, welcome back to Dekin Cards. So the IMO 2024 is finally here, and today we'll be taking a look at problem 1 from this collection of 6 really beautiful problems. Without further ado, let us take a look at the problem statement. So problem 1 is an algebra problem, though some may argue that there's an element of number theory in it. So here's the problem statement. Find all real number alpha such that for any positive integer n, floor of alpha plus floor of 2 alpha plus dot dot plus floor of n alpha is a multiple of n. So a, quite a short and sweet problem over here with a really interesting looking expression involving the floor function. Now when faced with a problem like this, usually you want to try to make your life simpler by trying some simple cases in order to get a better view of the problem. So naturally in this case, the floor functions are a bit annoying, so it's quite intuitive to start off by trying the case where alpha is an integer. If we do that, then we realize that all the terms here are integers and there's no need to deal with the floor functions. So the sum is directly uh, evaluating out to n times n plus 1 over 2 times alpha. So from here, we can ask ourselves when is this a multiple of n? Well, quite naturally, you can see that if alpha is even, then alpha over 2 will be an integer, and this whole expression will be a multiple of n. So, indeed, we have a valid solution here. On the other hand, if alpha is an odd integer, then right off the bat, alpha plus 2 alpha is 3 alpha, and 2 does not divide 3 alpha when alpha is odd. So, in this case, we do not have any valid solutions. Okay, so having uh, dealt with the easy case, what happens if alpha is not an integer? Well, we want to make use of what we have already learned from the integer case. So quite naturally, you want to write alpha as its integer part plus its fractional part. So the integer part is just the floor of alpha, and the fractional part given by this notation is the leftover, which in this case is strictly between 0 and 1. OK. What is really uh, what is really useful for the subsequent working is to realize that if we take the floor of k alpha, we can also understand this as kb plus the floor of kf. So indeed, k alpha is kb plus kf, and because kb is an integer, you can take it out of the floor function without affecting the overall value of this whole thing. So note that kf can indeed be more than 1 or less than 1, and it doesn't really matter, this expression is still valid. So do feel free to pause the video to ponder about this if this is not immediately clear. But this will be the key uh, expression that will help us solve the rest of the problem. So indeed, with this expression in mind, we can now rewrite the sum over here as the sum of two parts over here. The floor of alpha is b plus floor of f, floor of 2 alpha is 2b plus floor of 2f, and so on. This yellow part uh, is familiar from the integer case, and indeed that will be very helpful for us. Now, naturally what we want to do is better understand this blue part. And what we can see is that, well, floor of f will initially be 0, then floor of 2f, well, if 2f is still less than 1, then this will still be 0, but if s exceeded uh, greater than or equal to 1, then it will not be 0 anymore. But the idea is, basically, when you look at increasing multiples of f, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, and then it will cross over a threshold, and then it will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, then it will cross over a threshold, and then it will be 2, 2, 2, 2, and so on. So naturally, what you want to do is, this part we know, and then if it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then plus 1, you might be able to tell us something. So what we want to do is, we consider what happens uh, by looking at the number m, which is the smallest integer such that mf first crosses over the threshold of 1. So in this case, the floor of f all the way to the floor of m minus 1 f is 0, as I explained earlier. The floor of mf, we need to check that it is equal to 1. And indeed, when it first crosses the threshold of 1, uh, mf minus 1 is still 0 point something. It cannot be that mf is 2 point something because f is uh, strictly less than 1. So floor of mf, uh, or rather mf is then must be 1 point something, so its floor will be 1. 
Okay, so this is just a small technical detail here to check that this is not equal to 2 or 3 or something larger but equal to 1. Okay, so if we look at the case where B happens to be even, then we already know that this part over here is uh, going to be always divisible by n. So if we look at the special case where n equals to m, we see that well this is still divisible by m, but the expression here will be 0, 0, 0, 0, dot, 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 plus 1. So this whole thing will be 1 more than a multiple of m, so it will not be divisible by m. So indeed, we have shown that whenever uh, alpha is an even number plus a fractional part, then there will be, uh, it will not be a valid solution. How about the case where alpha is an odd integer plus a, its fractional part? Well, it turns out that it is much simpler to think of this as an even integer minus some part that is between 0 and 1. You can see why these are equivalent. For example, 1.7 is 2 minus 0 0.3. So the reason why this is better is because we know how to deal with the even case really well. Now, to give you a sense of how the multiples then interact with the floor function, let us think about uh, a few small cases. So the floor of alpha would be b minus 1 because this is uh, alpha is slightly below b, so if you floor it, it will be b minus 1. Then floor of 2 alpha, well, if the g is really, really small, then after doubling it, it will just be slightly below 2b, so the floor will be 2b minus 1. Specifically, this happens when 2g is less than or equal to 1. Then, but if 2g is bigger than 1, then the floor will be 2b minus 2. And I think you get a sense of how to then deal with this. Uh, the idea is now, we let m be the smallest integer such that mg is greater than 1, so it first crosses over the threshold of 1. This time we must use strictly bigger than 1. Uh, and what this tells us is that g all the way to m minus 1g is less than or equal to 1, but mg is uh, strictly between 1 and 2. So again, we need to check that it's uh, less than 2, but this is uh, again easy because uh, g is less than 1 itself. Okay, so what does this tell us? So this expression over here, uh, as given by the example over here, you can see that for the cases where g to m minus 1g is still less than or equal to 1, where we take the floor function, we are going to subtract 1 of its corresponding multiple of b. Whereas for m alpha, we are going to have uh, mb minus, because of this uh, observation here, it's going to be minus 2. So why do we bother with even uh, b is because, well, we know that this part here is divisible by m. This is the case that we know how to work with very well. And thankfully over here we have m terms, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. So this whole part will be minus m minus 1. So again, this is 1 less than multiple of m. So it is again quite clear that this is going to uh, fail the divisibility condition. Yeah, by the way, m here is bigger than 1, so if it's 1 less than multiple of m, there's no way it's going to be divisible by m. So we have shown that this case has no solution as well. So putting all the cases together, we see that the only valid solutions are all the even integers. So that is all for problem 1, and I think it is quite a neat little problem that is not too hard. Actually, the most logical way to explore the problem directly leads you to the solution. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little problem and more IMO problem videos will be coming up shortly. It's taking me a while to do some of the harder problems, but stay tuned to the channel for these IMO videos, which will be coming up real soon. See you then.